Hi, everybody, and welcome to our April Partner Seminar. I'm Holly Manasseri, and I am the Interim Director at the University of Hawaii Center on Disability Studies. And first, just a brief word about our Partner Seminar series. The purpose of the series is to highlight the numerous community partnerships we have at CDS. Uh, these are core to our mission, which is to promote diverse abilities across the lifespan through interdisciplinary training, research, and service. And today's presentation is unique that our, um, in that our guest is from within our College of Education. So today we will be talking about um, expanded opportunities for partnership uh, through the College of Education's proposed research institute. And I'm so pleased to introduce Dr. Kathy Ratliff, who is the chair of the Educational Psychology Department and a member of the graduate HUI. Um, the grad HUI is comprised of chairs of grad programs who have been meeting and discussing the proposed College of Education Research Institute. And today, Kathy is going to share how this has uh, developed, uh, what the purpose is of the Research Institute or the theory, and how faculty at CDS uh, may be able to potentially partner and participate. Um, and that is a bit unique because, as we know, CDS is an independent um, organized research unit housed within the College of Education. But this does give us many um, great opportunities to hear about these more formally articulated partnerships that are being developed and going to be a part of the who we, um, I'm sorry, of the Siri. And uh, I'm just gonna turn this over to Kathy at this point to walk us through that. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you, Holly. Nice to see everyone. Um, I think I know most of you. Um, so Holly asked me to come and talk about Siri or the College of Education uh, Research Institute. Siri is a provisional name. We don't know if the name will change, but if you have a good idea for a name for this institute, please let me know. We're very open to changing the name to something that people feel like might work better. Um, I, As Holly said, I've been working with the grad HUI, um, which is about oh, probably eight or ten of us who are chairs of graduate programs in the college. And um, the College of Education Research Institute was initially conceived of and, and initially planned by the CRDG faculty and staff, um, particularly Barb Doherty and Linda Venenciano when they were here. And it kind of uh, just wallowed a bit. And I think it was because the rest of the college didn't feel like they were as much a part of it as they would have liked to have been. It was kind of a CRDG thing. So after Barb and Linda left, Nathan asked the grad Hui to take it on, which I thought was a really good idea, um, being that the graduate departments have a lot of graduate students and there's a lot of research happening. So we decided to take it on and we've been working on it over the last, I don't even remember when we started. It's either a year and a half or two and a half years. It's probably a year and a half. Um, or it might even be a half a year. No, I think it's a year and a half. Um, anyway, so we took it on and just kind of explored what this could be in our college. And we came up with a plan we really like. And it's gotten to the point where I'm presenting it to other departments or units like CDS to get your input and um, to get ideas about how everybody can participate in this. So I will go through the slide deck that I have and kind of explain the schematic to all of you um, as it's proposed. And I'd love to hear your input, ideas for change or additions or how CDS can participate more or less or whatever you guys wanna do. I consider CDS faculty and staff as part of the college. So I see you all as participating as fully as anybody else. But I also see CDS as having special um, knowledge, information, and experience that could contribute to Siri. So I see you guys in several roles here. All right, I'm going to share my screen.
And I'm going to have to take all your faces off of my screen because I have a very small screen and I can't see the slides if your faces are there. So if you want to say something, please just say it. Just speak out. All right. So as I said, the College of Education Research Institute, or CIRI, was designed by the graduate Hui and based on designs from CRDG faculty and staff with COE faculty input. And the CIRI is going to start. It will be official as of this coming fall, August 1st, we hope. Okay, I'm, I'm going to monitor the chat also. Oh, you see the presenter view? Well, that's interesting. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Um, maybe I'll end the show because it's smaller in the presenter view. The trouble is my animations won't show, but that's okay. All right. Um, I guess if I put it in the slideshow view first and then shared. So let me do that. I'm going to stop sharing. I will go and put it in the slideshow view. Now I will share again, except I can't share again. Okay, sorry, never mind. All right, we're just stuck with it in this view. So we came up with a mission and a vision for um, Siri, and I'm going to read it out loud because I learned to do that when I was at CDS recognizing that not everybody can access the screen in the same way. So the mission of Siri is that the College of Education will produce meaningful research that addresses equity and social justice in education in Hawaii using a collaborative model within the COE and with other educational and social organizations. And our vision is that a research culture will be cultivated in the COE through the College of Education Research Institute. Faculty and students will support each other and be supported to conduct research and evaluation through facilitation and development of collaborative relationships within the COE and with community organizations with appropriate leadership, professional development opportunities, and support for the functions of research. The timeline of this new institute, as I said, we want to hire the new director of Siri soon to start in fall 2023, which means August 1st. We're going to do this hire from within the College of Education. Um, it will be a three-year appointment with potential for reappointment. And the department's the director's department will have lecturers to teach courses. Um, because you all are paid by and have a lot of time commitments to your grants. I don't see any of you as being able to apply for this director position, but if there's a way to do it, please go right ahead. So I'm going to show you the whole design for context and then go through each section in the following slides. Here's the whole design and it looks a little overwhelming. There's a lot on the screen. Um, so we're going to go through it part by part. The top, the blue at the top are the um, personnel. There's some personnel in the bottom too, but we're going to go through the top first. Um, the main personnel will be a full-time Siri director and a half-time associate director. There will also be a graduate assistant assigned to Siri and some administrative support. I don't know what the administrative support is gonna look like, but Nathan has promised it to us. The graduate assistant we are already starting to recruit for. All right, so now we're gonna go down to the next four boxes. Um, these are the programmatic boxes. Now I'm gonna go through each of these one by one, but I just wanna give you the scope of Siri first. Um, first box is the research and grant support. So we'll be, Siri will be providing research and grant support to faculty 
and students. Also, Siri will be coordinating and providing professional development regarding research and grants um, to faculty and possibly students. There also will be the development of community partnerships regarding new projects and also ongoing projects. And we will work on dissemination of the results of grants and of research that faculty and students are doing. So we'll go through each of these one by one. The first one is research and grant support. We will, Siri will support the writing of grants. That includes budgets, narratives, expectations of granting agencies, evaluation, boilerplate, et cetera. And this is where I see CDS is providing some support to others who haven't written grants before. Um, Val, who is already very involved with helping COE faculty submit grants, will continue in that role. She'll be under this programmatic area. Um, we also will help faculty and students design and conduct research, including writing proposals, IRB submissions, uh, submissions for publication and publication itself. And part of that includes working with the DOE to get approvals. There will be support for evaluation, evaluation of research, evaluation of grants, and other evaluation projects. This last thing was suggested by faculty when we sent a survey to the faculty last fall. We will have a research in residence program, which is pretty cool. So faculty will be able to uh, put down their responsibilities for teaching and take up a researcher in residence um, program for a semester, um, possibly two, but probably just one, where they can focus on their own research and also support Siri functions of supporting other faculty and students in research. Next programmatic area is professional development. In the survey that we sent out to the faculty, professional development was something that a lot of people wanted. Some existing programs that I stuck under this category, the main one is MAPS. This is um, Publication Services. I can't remember what the acronym stands for, but it's part of CRDG right now. It will move under Siri right now. The summer programs is a part of MAPS. MAPS also does publication services, but the summer programs itself um, has been mostly including uh, K to 12 students and running summer programs for them and providing opportunities for teachers in training to teach in the summers. But we want to expand it to include uh, in-service programs for teachers in the schools and also professional development for faculty in teacher education and other programs throughout the college. So those are ways that we hope that MAPS will expand and all of us can contribute to provide these opportunities for people. We will also hopefully have professional development for faculty related to research and grant writing. And we will uh, help faculty find the UHM workshops that are already being done on research um, and provide COE workshops as well. And there probably will be a lot more in there. I just haven't even conceived of it yet. All right, the next category is community partnerships and ongoing projects. CRDG has been doing a lot of this already. Um, some of their existing projects are the Hawaii Educational Research Network or HERN. This was funded by the Learning Coalition. It still is funded by the Learning Coalition. Um, and it's promoting partnerships between our College of Education faculty and graduate students and Department of Education teachers and administrators who have ideas that they want research done on. So a lot of times when graduate students are trying to conceptualize their own research for their masters or their um, doctoral um, capstone projects, their theses and dissertations, they don't have a lot to go on about what's needed in our state. And Hearn's ideas are to identify what's needed. What does the DOE need? 
what does the Hawaii State Ta Standards, Hawaii Teacher Standards Board need, um, et cetera, uh, other educational organizations. Um, so we want to promote partnerships between some of us in as faculty members who have some knowledge about how to develop research and people who need research. And then we have this wonderful partnership with graduate assistants who need to do research. So between those three groups, I think we can really get some really good projects going. And there are already several excellent projects running under HERN, and there's more money in HERN, so there's more room for more projects. CRDG also has some existing grant-funded pro programs. Hugh Dunn's Literacy Project is a really good one. Uh, they're doing partnerships with the DOE to develop literacy. Um, Paula Adams is After School Alliance. She's been working for a number of years. This is part of a national push to promote after school programs and partnerships. Paula has been very successful lately about getting grants, some small grants to build her After School Alliance. And she is promoting um, community schools, which um, promotes schools as a hub of the community and including functions that are useful to the community. So I'm really excited about that project. And Susan Saka has been doing her biannual health survey, which is part of a federal initiative and also a state in initiative to um, collect health data and behavioral data from adolescents, and including things like how many kids are smoking, how many are smoking marijuana, how many are vaping, how many are having sex, how many are having unprotected sex, how many are fighting, how many, et cetera. So a lot of behavioral health um, data is are being collected through this survey. Um, and we all use these data. And then hopefully other partnerships, many of them to be determined, particularly with the DOE. The last category in the programmatic area is dissemination. The college, um, many of the faculty in the college have been promoting our journal Educational Perspectives, which is now a magazine, to become peer reviewed and become a journal. So hopefully Siri will be able to find people and get people involved and get that to happen. We also would like to see research paper repositories for faculty and students. Faculty already can use the scholar space in the library to, as a repository for their papers, but many faculty don't do that. And I wonder if CDS faculty put their papers in that repository. Probably not. So what Siri needs to do is develop some tunnels, maybe, or pathways um, between the College of Ed and scholar space so that we easily can put our work up there and we easily can access work of other scholars within the college who might be doing similar research. Um, we also want to promote research conferences within the COE. So we have done already in the past, at least once, a really wonderful college-wide research conference where graduate students and faculty in a whole day with multiple sessions presented their research to their peers. We'd also like to see more local conferences where people from like, like HERA, for instance, the Hawaii Education Research Association, where um, people from other universities and UH present educational research. And possibly we can coordinate with CDS. We'll see what, what comes about and then other dissemination opportunities to be developed. So we'll see what happens. So we're back on the large schematic again, and we basically have gone through under each category, the things that are below it. Um, so now we're gonna move over to the side category, which I've kind of temporarily called supports. And I see CDS as much more than supports, put you in this category, at least for partially how you can support Siri. So our, the supports that, that the grad who we has come up with is one, an advisory council, 
And so to start, this will be the grad hui since we've been working on it, but eventually the advisory council will include faculty, students, and community partners. So I hope CDS will participate on this. Also, I listed CDS as a support or partner, even though your faculty can participate in any part of Siri. Um, but I see that you guys have expertise to offer regarding grant writing and submission and other topics. So you might be willing to provide some professional development for other faculty in the college. COE Fiscal is already supporting grants and developing budgets and implementing grants through the fiscal part. So they will continue to do that. And our community partners um, is another, our other partners, and we've already talked about HERN, the DOE, the Hawaii State Teacher Association, the Hawaii Teacher Standards Board, Hawaii P20, and others who have already been involved with a lot of faculty and a lot of projects, but we would like to more formalize these relationships and also expand them. And then other partnerships which can be developed, which we don't know about yet. So now we're gonna to go to the research strands, which is the bottom here. And these are faculty student partnerships around topical areas. So faculty can either share their research with each other in these groups, or they can collaborate with each other to develop research or to expand research in these areas. This is just a sample of areas. So language and literacy, educational technology, teacher education, educational policy, and these HUIs will be informally created by faculty and students as with the facilitation of the Siri director and associate director. They identify common research interests and then they will form these HUIs, which will be supported by Siri staff. And we don't know yet what that's going to look like, but some potential strand areas or HUIs could include all of these ideas, um, plus lots of others. And these are kind of broad ideas. My guess is that within each of these areas, there would be subgroups working on different ideas. So here's the whole schematic again, except for the research hui ideas, which are on a separate page. And next, I just wanted to talk about what, where do we go from here? So my talk to you is part of the disseminating plans for Siri and getting feedback from faculty and staff. We do plan to hire a director for Siri to start in fall 2023. Um, we want to develop partnerships within the College of Education and also with community partners. We want a Siri to develop procedures for monitoring and assisting faculty with research and grant writing. We want to develop professional opportunity, opportun professional development opportunities for faculty and possibly, probably students. We plan to hire a graduate assistant to support Siri initiatives and to support faculty research and to hire an associate director probably at a later date. All right, so here's the schematic again. And um, Holly has access to this on Google Docs. So if you would like to look through it again or have some questions about it, please ask her and she can make it available to you. Okay, yep. And I'm gonna stop sharing and invite feedback, comments, and questions. Thank Some you so much. Stunned. Yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Kathy. I did share the schematic, but I will um, make sure to also put out the PowerPoint. I think that was really helpful um, today to have you take us through those other pieces that have continued to evolve and develop, such as all of those research strands. So hopefully we'll get some questions um, here from folks. Uh, let's start with the actual posting for the director. I, I think you said that that's going to be like a three year limited uh, opportunity. So will that be like posted at a specialist line? What does that look like? I know you, I heard you say, you know, it's like an existing faculty member. So they'll set aside some of their teaching responsibilities. But could you say a little bit more about that? Or is there actually a job description? And what's the timeline for posting just so we know here? There is a draft job description. Um, it's going to go to Nathan for his approval as soon as I get it to him. Um, and we are looking for the associate to full level because this is a director position. Um, I don't think specialists are excluded. Actually, I'm sure they're not. So um, it can be an associate or a full professor or specialist. Um, so we're hoping that that job description will be posted soon and people can start looking at it and deciding whether or not they want to apply. The three year is kind of, Nathan has in his mind that it's similar to chairs of departments. We get appointed chair for three years. And then if everything's going well, we get reappointed for another three years. It just gives everybody a chance to review what's happening and. Do you want to stay in that position or should, you know, do you want to go back to faculty or how do you want to do that? So the same would be true of the Siri director. Um, some of the faculty chairs in the grad who really liked this idea and yet they were like, oh, I hope none of my faculty apply <laughs> because we don't want to lose anybody in our departments. We're all so tight right now. But anyway, we'll see what happens. I hope somebody applies. Did that answer your questions, Holly? Okay. Anyone else? Burning question from folks? Maybe we answered everyone's questions. <laughs> Um, I guess I'll ask one more then in looking at okay. uh, the description of the student and teacher uh, partners that you had in there. What are the additional benefits that would come with that? So I heard you say like that will be under the theory and that, you know, there will be some support, but what would be a benefit? We have a disability studies program here and Raphael is on, but I can imagine that perhaps um, you know, yeah, course instructors and students that might have some of these topic areas might um, also want to be a part of that. What what would they be receiving and what would that look like? Is it just for one semester? Could folks have started a project in a semester with the course and want to continue to expand that? Uh, what are some of the discussions around that? Okay, thank you. Um, we think that these partnerships between faculty and students are important and with community um, folks because oftentimes in the college, we don't really know what's needed out there. Maybe in your disability studies course, there's a capstone that's required, if I remember correctly. I don't remember if it's a research paper, but it probably could be, right? Um, so. Maybe it would be really nice to know what special ed in the DOE think that they need rather than a student saying, oh, I'd really like to, you know, do this very small little study that really doesn't have much meaning to other people. Um, instead, you could partner with some faculty members in the DOE who really want some really interesting work done. Maybe they want to see how effective it is to do um, video modeling or may or yeah maybe how difficult it is or how much help they need to do that or whether it works in classrooms or you know photo voice or whatever it might be that that teachers might be interested in to work with specific students that they have or specific specific groups of students 
Um, so I can see it's certainly fitting in the disability world, and it could fit with not only your disability studies certificate, but it could fit with um, some of the grants and research that you guys are doing. You could get extra help through partnering. Great. Thank you. That clarifies that. Um, wonderful. So much here in this model. Any other great questions? We've got some things in the chat. Yep. Jerrica, did you want to okay. ask that question and we can see it? Yep. See that, Kathy? Will College of Ed faculty yeah. be required mm -hmm. to that, allocate a portion faculty, of time? Yeah, COE faculty are already required to do research. We have to perish or pu publish or perish. We perish first and then we publish. Um, so we are required to be producing research as we go along. Um, so Siri is meant to be a support for that rather than a time sink. We don't want people to feel like they have to allocate their time to Siri. Um, but I think that there will be a lot of faculty members who will want the support that Siri will offer, and also who will be willing to offer what they know. You know, I have some experience writing grants. I'd be happy to work with other faculty member who want to do that um, or conducting research. Um, I'm, you know, I'm sure some faculty who use Envivo a lot um, would be happy to share their strategies for using that with other faculty. Already, a lot of faculty are one on one kind of asking for that kind of help. I've had a number of faculty members come to me and say, Could you help me learn to use Envivo um, or do qualitative research, etc.? So we can support each other, and hopefully, the director and the associate director will have some experience and some knowledge that they can offer and they can network with others. Excellent. Anyone else? Sorry, so just to clarify, there won't be like a kind of tracking system or accountability to ensure that the faculty are contributing to Siri or I guess I don't understand how no. it how it differs from what they're doing now it doesn't necessarily differ they don't have to participate in Siri at all we just really want to encourage people to uh, network and to work together if they want to there's some faculty members who are not going to want to they don't want to collaborate with others so they're not going to do it but I think there are some faculty members who really would like to, or maybe some faculty members would like to at some times and not at other times. So Siri will be a resource for them. That's such a great point, Kathy. And, and I think um, something else that's come up out of the conversation is like for new faculty that are just joining, sometimes to make those mm -hmm. partnerships and network um, can be challenging. So this really serves as that hub to get folks to work together or say, well, here's a great opportunity that one of the community partners is looking for some research support in and kind of facilitate that pathway. So that's one example, um, Jericho, of how it, it can possibly be a potential benefit. And I think the second piece that's come up in some of those meetings is some of the potential barriers of doing that research with community partners is going to actually be kind of facilitated through this process. Not, it doesn't limit, a, limit anyone else from doing that partnership work. It's not like saying you must go through Siri in order to do any partnership work. So we want to, you know, uh, buck that myth, but it can help to facilitate because the partners are actually saying, uh, like, here's an important thing where we have this $50 million literacy grant and we need some support in this particular area so it can facilitate some of that work. Is that fair to say, Kathy, that that's one of the other potentials of this? Yes, it absolutely is. And we've been working with some of the community partners already to develop memorandums of understanding so that 
for instance, the DOE can actually pay some faculty for some direct support that faculty are giving to the DOE. The DOE doesn't have some areas of expertise, like how to develop a really good survey and how to analyze the data from that survey, um, how to evaluate a program, those kinds of things are things that our faculty could provide and could partner with graduate assistants to teach them those skills as they work with DOE folks to provide this service that they need. And faculty are already doing some of these things. So Siri can facilitate the pipelines so that people know where to come to ask for help. As the new acting director of CRDG, I got put into this position knowing nothing about or not much about what CRDG does. Um, I get, and Holly, you probably do too, really interesting requests from the community. Could you please get me you know, a copy of the 1984 study on early childhood um, education? I'm like, 1984? I don't even know anyone who worked here in 1984. <laughs> so, you know, and uh, oh, could you tell me how to establish a new laboratory school for early childhood education? I'm like, oh, that's an interesting question. But these are real questions that are coming from the community. They want to know if these things are possible. And they're looking at ways of partnering with us that either haven't been done before or haven't been done in a long time. And they're also indicating what the needs are. Of course, early childhood is a huge need right now because of the new push for uh, um, additional preschools in the community. That's great, and Kathy. I remember, work yeah. Yeah, I remember working at CDS and having parents call me up. Oh, somebody said you might be able to help me with this. I have a child with autism and I'm trying to figure out how to get him onto the baseball team. And, you know, can you help? Well, um, hmm. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's really, I'm sure all of you field questions like that. Thank you, Kathy. So some next steps, um, maybe CDS folks can take a look at that slide deck. And under especially the research strands, you know, I'm, I think that there's a lot of current projects that are taking place and a lot of expertise in CDS that's maybe not represented um, on that kind of chart that's just a, a beginning brainstorm and that could be populated in to show, you know, what you're already doing and the expertise that you bring, especially in the already existing, you know, numerous uh, partnerships and networks that we have. That might be one way that we can contribute and kind of feed back um, into this process. And then certainly any other way. I mean, I think uh, one of the earlier schematics didn't have CDS even listed. So you see that we're there on the side at support, but as Kathy already mentioned, um, um, absolutely every piece of, of theory should be available and be able to be applied to faculty here at CDS as well. So there's research fellow opportunities, individuals at CDS would be able to partner with that or apply. There are, as Kathy mentioned, opportunities for some direct pay um, from the, the actual community partners for some of the research skills that they're seeking. CDS faculty would be able to participate in that. Um, so we'll do a deeper dive and take a look and uh, be able to add um, any ideas that you have that you don't see represented there. And, um, you know, any last questions for Kathy? I'll just turn it over to, you know, just unmute and go ahead and ask. I just wanted to say thank you, Kathy. It sounds really exciting and a, a greater way for collaboration and to learn more about the projects and congratulations on your CDRG leadership. I didn't know that that was your new role too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. Yeah, thank you uh, so much, Kathy. I know that you have been working hard on this for a while. And so thank you for making time to share about um, about all of this with us. And I just wanted to say that I really like the idea of these partnerships between faculty and graduate students because graduate students and graduate, well, graduate assistants, they're, they are professionals. And I think it's important to recognize that. And you always treated me that way when I was your GA. And I just really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. 
And so I think that, um, you know, this, it's going to be really great to see how these, um, how these partnerships uh, come together and what comes out of them. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I do have one um, quick question. Um, is this going to be like housed within the new building that the COE is moving into? Or do you, <laughs> I'm seeing you laugh. Do you know where this might be? <laughs> The new building is not a done deal yet. Okay. Um, we don't really know what's happening. So okay. we don't know where Siri will be housed. Got it. Probably Got it. the director will stay in the office they're in right now and it will all be done like this. Okay. <laughs> somehow, at least for a while being. Um, but I hope we'll have gatherings and things, events where we can all actually physically get together. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's envisioned a place for Siri, just mm -hmm. a function for Siri. Got it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Victoria. Thank you so much, Kathy. We really appreciate your time and for sharing that with us here at CBS.